how easy or difficult do you think it would be for you to participate in a lung cancer clinical trial? And can you describe any barriers that you might have? Living in a rural area, the, the number one barrier to almost anything is transportation. We do have a public health transportation department, but they are only um, able to provide transportation and that's providing to have staff on the particular day of your appointment. They can take you to a medical appointment only. Would a study qualify as a medical appointment? I am not sure about that. So transportation is always, obviously there would not be an opportunity or I doubt there'd be an opportunity on reservation to participate in this study. They wouldn't be able to recruit enough people, I, I wouldn't think. So we would have to go possibly Aiken, Crosby, Brainerd, or more likely um, the Twin Cities, St. Paul, Minneapolis, which is quite a drive. That's where I had to go for my surgery. Maybe didn't have to go, but you're on the rural area, you're also um, pretty much limited. You have to go through a rural pro a referral process with IHS, and, um, and that's another, you know, access and transportation. It's, it's difficult, very difficult. So definitely transportation is number one barrier. I wish we had closer facilities to go to or um, I have to say my pulmonologist, there's so many people involved in cancer care. You have your general um, family physician, then you get referred to a pulmonologist, and then you find somewhere to go for your CAT scans and your PET scans, and then your pulmonologist refers you to a surgeon, then your surgeon refers you to an oncologist, and it's like, it's a rat race and trying to find transportation to all these different people in all these different places is very, very difficult. Thank you, Carol. Are there, are there any other barriers that you can think of that would limit someone wanting to participate in a clinical trial? I, I think we have to remember um, trust, building trust um, with your medical providers, trusting the system, trusting Western medicine. Trust is, is um, sometimes a hard thing to earn in the eyes of an American Indian. We don't always feel like we're being treated fairly or getting the same care, quality of care that someone else is getting. The situation for me, a personal situation as well, um, we, many of us have a strong faith in our traditional medicine, in our medicine men. I myself, I, I knew I was going to have my lung resection. I made my decision to do that. My conversation with my surgeon, it was not, he did not support um, chemotherapy. He just stated in his, his opinion that chemotherapy has a lot of side effects that, that he doesn't feel ben would benefit someone in my early stage. I then went to my oncologist who, who said oh, chemotherapy is the only way to go. Um, why would we take a wait and see approach that um, my surgeon thought was, was a, a way that I should consider. In between, prior, after having conversation with my surgeon and then going to see my oncologist, I went and talked to a trusted elder, a drum keeper, about traditional medicine. I, I wanted to explore that option that maybe I should go that way. And he said, Carol, it's a good way, but you need to make up your mind. You go one way or the other, you go our way, traditional medicine, or you go with the doctor. You don't mix them. I thought about that for a long time. Um, and I do trust Western medicine, I do. And it, actually at the point that I had that conversation with that elder, we did not at that moment have a traditional healer here on the reservation. So it truly wasn't an option for me anyway, but I did, I thought I could find one somewhere else, but I, I wanted to have conversation. And I do think that American Indian people should have conversation about both or any option of treatment, have that conversation, be informed, and um, 
make a decision based on, on um, what you've been told. I myself am a member, I, I attend a medicine camp in Canada, the Peguis Nation. Um, they have a four-year program for traditional medicine. It is their belief that our traditional medicine and the Western medicine walk hand in hand. So I, I think everybody needs to consult who you think is either an expert or knowledgeable in both walking hand in hand or walking one path versus the other. I think it's very important to, to be informed. And um, this may be slightly off track, but both my parents died of cancer at 67. My mother died of bilateral breast cancer. My father died from small cell lung cancer. I have non-small cell lung cancer, a little different cancer than his lung cancer. But I remember my mother, um, when her oncologist said, there isn't anything more we can do for you. And she was very angry. And she said, if my mother were alive, my grandmother who was a medicine woman, she said, I wouldn't even be in this bed to begin with. I, I haven't forgotten that. And her strong faith in the medicine that her mother gave her, my grandmother had been long gone deceased prior to my mother's cancer and living in the cities, there wasn't access at that time. This was many years ago to a traditional healer, but I remember that. And I think it's important for American Indian people to look at all options. And that would be to include their traditional healers as well.